a few years ago, I made a video where I reviewed the Kelly Kettle Trekker, and that video was very well received. So when I had the opportunity to review the Gilly Kettle, you know I jumped on it. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this kettle, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I want to thank the company Coolers.ca for sending me the Gilly Kettle so I could share it with you. And Coolers.ca is part of a larger company that also sells the Polyverb boots from Sweden that I reviewed on a, in another video. So the other thing I think I'll do is I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about how the uh, Gilly Kettle works, because if you watch my video on Kelly Kettles, they're the same. It's exactly the same principle. Uh, there are a few differences, and that's the thing I want to talk about, is what makes the Gilly Kettle fr different from the uh, Kelly Kettle. Now, on just looking at it, you would have a hard time telling the difference. In fact, you could be forgiven if you thought I had a Kelly Kettle in my hands. But there are some differences, and those are what I want to point out. So in a minute, I am going to show you everything that was sent to me as part of this kit, but I also first want to talk about the differences between the two. So number one, this kettle is made of hard anodized aluminum, not stainless steel, but hard anodized aluminum. I'll talk more to that in a moment. Here are a couple of the big things. This kettle is still handmade in the UK. The Kelly kettle is not. It is made offshore. I'm sure most of you were aware of that by now. So if that's important to you to know where your kettle is made, this one is still made in the United Kingdom. Second, this kettle has a 10-year warranty on it. So it, is, it has a lot of things going for it, but I think what I'll do before we go any further is I'll give you a close-up of the kettle and each of the components that came in this kit. All right, let's start with the contents of the kit itself. So this is the Explorer version of the Gilly Kettle. That This is a one liter kettle, so it's bigger than the Trekker that I previously reviewed, but smaller than the base camp that I have at home. And there's one in between for Kelly Kettle, I believe it is the Scout. And I'm not sure what the volume of that is, I'll put that on the screen, but just to bear in mind, this is a one liter version of their kettles. So everything came in the stuff sack. I'm going to speak to the stuff sack again in a minute, but it's the contents I'm sure you want to see. So I have this laying over top of the kettle. This is a kind of unique thing. This is a stand that you can put on the ground to put the hobo stove portion of the kettle inside of this to keep it off the ground and to spread it out and give it a little bit more stability. I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a few moments time. So it's different, something that the Kelly kettle does not have. Uh, the kettle itself, right? Okay, I'm going to come back to the kettle itself and give you some details about that in a minute. Just want to show you what the accessories are that came with it. So this is the pot pan set that came with it. A little bit of ash from the last time I used it. Also hard anodized and uh, really, really nice quality. Uh, what I like about this being hard anodized, at least the pan, is that this will take a bit of a seasoning and if you want to do, well, not very much, but you could do a little tiny bit of frying, maybe an egg, a couple pieces of bacon, a sausage, hamburger, something like that. It's size enough for that. I'm going to be using it today for cooking my lunch on, which will be a soup. So I'll demonstrate in a minute. And, but it all comes together and this will fit up inside for storage purposes to get it out of the way. Now, a few other things in the kit. Just for convenience sake, I did put them in a little stuff sack, so this did not come with the set. What have I got in here? Okay, a couple of things. A grill to use on the hobo stove. It's not hinged like it is with the Kelly kettle, but I think that's great. Then you can put both of them in or one of them in. You don't have to fold it over. So if you want to have access to your hot coals or feeding in sticks, you can just put one half in, whatever you need. So a little pot gripper to go with that pot pan set I showed you a minute ago. Also anodized aluminum. And a pair of cross stands or pot supports that work with the kettle so that you can use that little pot pan set on top of the kettle over the chimney. And I'll demonstrate that in a moment. What else have I got in here? Oh, I've got a bandana, of course. So that's just to keep things clean and handle it. Let's just come back to the kettle itself. So sometimes it takes a little bit of a knock to get it out. And the only reason that is, of course, is because 
I'm starting to get sooted up and greased up inside, or the creosoted up inside of the kettle. So that means it's going to be a little bit sticky. So this is the base, the fire base or hobo to stove type of thing that you would build your fire in to lay the kettle on top. And of course it stores in upside down in the kettle to keep everything compact when you put it away. A little bit different from the Kelly kettle, but not much. Actually, I think it's the, they're virtually identical, but this again is made of hard anodized aluminum. And uh, that has benefits. Again, I'll speak to in a moment. Now, Kelly or Gilly kettle does have a hobo top for this available on their website, but it wasn't available to the me at the time of receiving the uh, kit. But it is something I'm looking to add to this just to get a little bit more versatility where you can use this as a standalone wood stove and not necessarily have to use the kettle with it. Although you're likely going to pack them all away because there's nothing more efficient than a storm kettle like this one. All right, let's look at this. So this is, and I'm going to say it again, and then I'll explain why. This is hard anodized aluminum. This is what they do in the UK to make this very, very strong. So what are the benefits of hard anodized aluminum? Well, let's put it this way. It's every bit as light as titanium, but it has the strength of stainless steel. So what you get is you get a kettle that comparable to stainless steel is much lighter. Comparable in the sense if the kettle is the same size as this one, an anodized aluminum, hard anodized aluminum, that's important as well because hard anodized aluminum is a little bit of a different process and it makes everything much, much stronger. So the people at Gilly Kettle claim that this is both scratch resistant and dent resistant, much more so even than stainless steel, yet has all the heat conductivity of aluminum, which of course is the best of all metals for conducting heat, or realistically is copper is better, but you don't see copper kettles. And yeah, so when I compared this against the other two Kelly kettles I had, uh, they're almost identical. They really are. There's not a lot difference between them. I did notice that the rolled edge here appears to be a little thicker, a little stronger. And uh, I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but I like this a bit better. Let me see if I can give it a little detail there. But the rolled edge of the top was the same. The handle, which is hardwood and works exactly the same. The chain, the attachment for the chain to the side is the same. <laughs> Everything seems to be very much the same. I mean, I guess why mess with a successful design? But here's one thing that's very, very different between the two. Gilly Kettle has been using this for a long time. This is a whistling lid to put over top of the spout. Now, it has been long since known that you never put something over the spout of your kettle while it's on over the fire, fire because you don't, do not want to build up a dangerous amount of pressure inside of your kettle and have it rupture. But a whistling uh, lid is something different altogether. You can put this on and when it comes to a boil, so it'll boil a little bit faster as a result of that, but it'll make a loud whistle, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Uh, only thing I'll say is don't put it on tight. Put it on as loosely as you can because you're going to try and reach and take that off, and if it snugs up because of the heat, it can be a challenge. So, yeah, just leave it on as loose as you can. Otherwise, these things are almost the same. Oh, if you haven't seen inside a storm kettle like this, they're all virtually the same. The principle is, is that it's a rocket stove for all intents and purposes. It will draw, pull, like you wouldn't believe, air in through the base of the, of the, of the fire portion of it and up through this chimney, and it will create an intense amount of heat. The water is in a jacket surrounding the chimney. So the kettle is much bigger uh, then, you know, I guess what I should say, it doesn't hold near as much water as you would think by looking at the size of the kettle because so much of it is open for the chimney. But it's that design, storm kettle it's been called, volcano kettle it's been called generically because there are a number of different brands available around the world. And they all work on the same principle. Okay, so uh, let me just give you a few of the specifications for this, but I'll do that quickly because I will be repeating it in the video description. Okay, so as I mentioned, hard anodized aluminum, the weight of the kettle, and this is with the base because, of course, it's not very much. Well, you can use them without a base, but that's a separate discussion. But with the base, 
it comes in at 0.8 kilograms, which is 28.2 ounces. <laughs> you know, that's, that's very light for a one liter kettle. One liter or 33.8 ounces is the capacity. I'll tell you, I never fill it up quite that high because I find if you fill it right up to the bottom of the spout, then once it starts boiling, it starts water starts coming out and you know it's not going to drench your fire because your fire is protected but it's unnecessary having water pouring out so I always leave just a little bit more room in the top of it. The height from the bottom to the top is 11 inches or 28 centimeters. The width and that's across the bottom is 7.3 inches or 18.5 centimeters. Again I'll put all that information in the video description below. A couple of other close-ups I'll give you. There is the label, Gilly Kettle, proudly displaying the flag of the UK, stating that is where it's made. Yeah, okay, so once again, very, very simple. Now, what I haven't done with this kettle yet, I've had fires in it, obviously, and had made coffee and tea with it, but what I haven't done is used it to cook my lunch on top, so that's what I'm going to do, do today. So let's get set up and demonstrate it. All right, so I've just walked around the immediate area, and I picked uh, off a pine tree, some what I call understory branches. They're the small branches on the bottom of a tree that have died and they, they provide the perfect tinder for uh, the kettle like this. And this, what I've got in my hands, is way too much for what I need. This is, uh, I just grabbed a few branches. This will bring the kettle a quarter of this or less will bring the kettle to a boil. As you'll see, it'll work very fine or very, very quickly. However, I do plan on heating up some stew in this pot and or soup in this pot. So I will want to switch over. I have some just some tiny hardwood splits that I'll be dropping down in the kettle just to maintain the fire because this is grow, goes intensely hot, the, this uh, pine, but it doesn't last very long. Okay, so what have I done? So here is that base I mentioned, that wire base, and the fire bowl itself sits inside of that base. Now, it has a single hole on this style stove and ideally face that into the wind. The more wind, actually, that's the thing about these, the windier it is, the better the stove works. I'll say that again, the windier it is, the worse the conditions are that you're out in, the better these things work. They are protected, the fire is totally protected once you get it started and get the, the kettle on. It's totally protected from the rain or wind or everything else, and wind coming in through that hole will actually intensify the burn up inside of it. So let's get this started. I'm gonna pick out some smaller ones here, little tiny ones. Uh, first step is to build a small fire inside, just a small one. You don't need a very big one because we're going to do the majority of feeding the wood in from the top once I get the kettle on. I'm just using a fire plug here, working it up a little bit to expose some of the fires or fibers that is. And I'll light that up. Give that a second. Oh, mother, didn't want to stay lit. Expose some more fibers on it. All right, that'll work. Much better. Put that down in the bowl, just give it a second for it to really catch on. A couple of these really, really small, thin little twigs. I'll snap those and drop those in on top. I don't want to put the plug out. So I think I'll just put a stick down inside, kind of as a brace, like you might in a larger fire. Put these on top. Okay, that's good. They're gonna catch on very quickly. Just give them a second. See a little bit of flame coming up through. Now, again, if you watch my earlier video or if you know anything about these storm kettles, you'll only make this mistake once. You don't grab the kettle by the handle over top of the chimney and put it over the fire. I say you'll only make it once because you'll lose all the hair on the back of your hand and be lucky and count yourself lucky that's all it did. So the way to do it is to hold it from the side, drop it down over, and I'm not sure if that's picking up, but the difference in sound the moment I place that down on top is incredible. Immediately, and if I'm looking down inside, you can see the air rushing in and the wood really catching on. So before that burns through, start 
dropping some bigger ones on down through the top. And you can drop a lot in. I mean, there's no limit. In fact, if you take longer ones like this that come up the chimney a ways, the fire is just going to climb up the stick. You don't have to break these really, really small, which means food, wood processing does not have to be all that difficult or challenging to do. That one's sticking out, but <laughs> it won't stay sticking out for very long. Still catching on down there, but in a second, there'll be flames just shooting out of the top of the kettle here. Throw a few more in. They're already reaching above the kettle. Yep. Hoping that's showing up on camera, the flames coming above the top of the kettle, just how quickly this will really get going. And to be honest, it's not even windy right now. If it had been windy, if I was down on the edge of the lake itself, I would end up with a real hot fire really, really quickly. Okay, I think that's enough to get it going. I went through all the little sticks. That's more than enough to bring this kettle to a boil. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to set up to cook my stew or my soup over the top of this and allow the water to come to a boil here. And when I'm ready to put my pot on for the stew, that's when I'll bring it back. All right, impressive as only. I barely had a chance to get the ingredients to my soup in my pot when the kettle came to a boil. Now, I do want to take that off. I'm going to have to not burn myself. There, that was easy enough. But you can see the water is boiling hard. Had I put any more water in that than I had, it would be boiling out over the top. All right, let me put my pot on. Now, any more feeding of wood, I am going to have to take the pot off and drop it in. And I will be putting in, well, I have a few more of those pine sticks here, but I also have some little splits of hardwood that I have from uh, cut from before that I'll be dropping just to maintain the fire long enough to bring my soup to up to temperature. If you're going to use the pot stand and pot on top or fry pan, and by the way, the pot stand, I don't know if that shows, is actually got three different height settings. So this one sets in the middle setting. So that's what it's intended for. But if you have a smaller pot, you can still put it on. And of course, if you have a much larger pot, uh, you know, within reason, of course, you can put it on as well. So that's the way the pot stand is designed. But what I was going to say is, if you are going to use the pot stand and pot or fry pan or anything else, you have to make sure there is water in the kettle. There always has to be water in the kettle while it's on the heat. Otherwise, there's a high chance you'll ruin your kettle from if there's no water inside of it. So you might consider that a bit of a downside, but as long as your kettle is full, when you start out, then you should be able to bring your lunch or whatever it is you have on top to heat. Now, I'm just going to lay this on top to hold some heat in it. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to work on it. Oh, by the way, this is something I had meant to mention. The bag that it came in is a nice nylon little bag. It has drawstrings in the style that make it a little backpack. I can't see using it really that way and carrying this kettle as a backpack, but I'll tell you what I can see using this bag for, collecting wood. So I just, I didn't have to go far to get the wood I, I found, but uh, if I had wanted to, I could have taken this, broke the branches, filled this up and had way, way more wood than I would need to, to heat my lunch. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is heat my lunch up, enjoy that, I'm going to be using this to make coffee afterwards, but I'll come back before I do that, just so that we can have a few more thoughts on the ghillie kettle. All right, so I finished up my lunch and uh, had myself a cup of coffee, and I just wanted to give you a few more thoughts on using the kettle kettle. So I don't think I mentioned when I show you how the fire bowl sits in that triangular type of an arrangement. One of the benefits of it is that holds it off of the ground about a half an inch. Now you still have to be cautious of what's underneath your pot to start with because you don't want to transfer too much uh, heat into the earth, but it does give you a layer of protection 
as well as stability to the whole system because of course it widens out the whole base and makes it much more stable to use. Now here's the thing I didn't expect, the benefit that I didn't expect. This is the pot I cooked my lunch in, I had my soup, it was really nice. First time I'd actually used this pot, uh, not for any special reason, I just never had any reason to use it before, but here was the unexpected benefit. After I finished my lunch I took it down to Streamside to clean it out and it was all sooty on the bottom, it's not now. And the reason is the hard anodized aluminum acts like a non-stick surface. It seals and coats the, the aluminum underneath. And I, I'm not going to say it's a non-stick surface like something on your fry pan at home. But you can see I literally just wiped that off with my hand. And it <laughs> I'm just impressed how much of it absolutely came off. So just a small side benefit to the hard anodized aluminum. Okay, so there's a question that I have been mulling over since I started this video and I kept saying in the video that it works just like the Cali Cattle and it does really functionally there is really no difference between them at all they're both volcano stoves or storm stove kettles however you want to call them they look very much alike you use them exactly the same way is there a benefit of one over the other? Well, there is a benefit right away of using the hard anodized aluminum, weight saving, and uh, yeah, that's true. Now, is, does it conduct the heat from the fire faster? I don't know that I can even test that because I don't think Kelly Kettle has a one liter model of exactly the same size. And that's the only way you could do it really is to have exactly the same kettles uh, made in the two different materials. But I'll say this, this is fast. Well, you saw just how quickly it can bring water to a boil. It's also very durable, more durable than stainless steel. Only time will tell that for sure. But there is one distinct benefit of it lighter weight. So for the same size kettle, the hard anodized aluminum is considerably lighter than is the stainless steel. So if weight is important to you, then that's another thing to think about. Uh, yes, I know it's a big item, right? It's big and bulky and it's not the type of thing a lot of people want to carry into the woods unless they're not going that far away from the car. Or maybe they have a way of transporting stuff like uh, in a, in a canoe or kayak. This is the perfect shore lunch thing. Doesn't matter how windy it is, as long as you can find a few little dry pieces of wood. And they don't even have to be that dry. Enough to start a fire, drop them in, and the intense heat will draw any wood out. Now, not soaking wet wood, but you know, if it's slightly damp because it's drizzling, as long as you can split it down and get some dry wood to expose to get the fire started, this is going to burn it. There's no question about it. So if you can get it uh, past the size of these kettles, You'll, you'll start to appreciate just how efficient they are. The, you know, with just a few sticks, I brought a liter of water to a boil faster, well, certainly faster than an alcohol stove. And I would say on par, and maybe I'll do that sometimes, do a side-by-side, -side, on par with a, a gas stove. Now, a high-intensity gas stove, maybe not, but for a lot of the gas stoves that we take out, this thing is probably going to be right on par in terms of time. But you don't have to carry fuel. You pick it up off of the ground. That's what this is all about. You pick your fuel up off of the ground and within minutes you have hot water or you can cook a lunch over it. Um, there's one other benefit we haven't talked about much and this is something that you're going to have to draw your own conclusions on it where it's made. Is it important to you where your kettle is made? If it is, and you prefer to have your kettle made in the UK as opposed to in China, then obviously the Gilly kettle is uh, the choice for you. If it's not that important, then really it comes down to a draw. Which one do you want? Feature to feature, they're so very close to the same that I wouldn't say one is that much better than the other. So yeah. I like this. I'm probably going to carry this at least as much as the Trekker, maybe more often. The uh, thing is, when I have somebody else with me, I mean, a liter of water, I don't need to boil a liter of water very often unless I'm looking for uh, cleaning my water to make it eat, uh, safe to drink. I mean, there's a benefit there as well, right? Okay. Do you have the Gilly Kettle? Do you have the Kelly Kettle? If you have either one of those and you have any comments you want to share or any experiences you want to share in using either of them, then please put those in the comments section below. Let me know which one you would buy, dollar for dollar, if they're at the same price, or even if they aren't. I guess the question is, which one would you buy for yourself, the Gilly Kettle or the Kelly Kettle? I like them both, 
but I really like this gilly cattle. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.